The average price for a cinema lens that most movies are shot on is over 10,000 US dollars. And this is just for one single lens. Most films require a set of at least five lenses. You can expect to double that price when it comes to anamorphic lenses and also zoom lenses. So the hope for a low budget independent shooter to rent or buy these lenses is very unlikely. Within the cinema world, there are a variety of lens brands, but one of the most common and successful is the English company Cook. The Cook Speed Pangos were first introduced into the cinema world in the 1930s and were used on films such as Casablanca. But as their design and speed developed, they were used in more films into the 60s, including The Sound of Music. By the 1990s, however, the Speed Pangos were used less and less as the demand for sharper and more clinical glass became necessary. Before the digital revolution took over, cinematographers would choose lenses which were optically the sharpest and most precise in order to balance the inconsistencies created in the chemical stages of the film process. But as digital cameras increased in popularity, the demand for lenses with more character and visual defects seemed to rise to compensate digital cameras' naturally overly artificial feel. And so a lot of cinematographers went back to older lenses and anamorphic shooting to achieve the organic looks they were after. Cook Speed Pancros quickly became a go-to for a lot of filmmakers wanting to shoot period piece style content. These exact lenses have been used on major film productions such as The Crown, Chernobyl, Bohemian Rhapsody, and also in the Academy Award nominated film for Best Cinematography, Mr. Turner. The unique look of the Cook Speed Pancros is largely achieved when shooting wide open. Although not the fastest lenses at T2.3, there is a very interesting swirling effect in the out-of-focus areas, which adds to a look which could be described as smeary or painterly. I think this is one of the biggest selling points of the lens. Imperfections add character to a shot the way that film stocks would add grain and chemical inconsistencies. This is what makes vintage lenses so sought after. One of the issues with the older lenses is they do tend to flare more than modern lenses and these type of lenses um, do create a really beautiful flare when put in the sun but it can be distracting if you're used to more coated lenses. So how much are Cook Speed Pancros? Well, they're still around 10,000 US dollars for a single lens. If you buy them in their rehouse versions, the Panko Eye Classics, TLS and other alternatives. So why are these considered affordable cinema lenses if they are still so expensive and were used on all these major films? Well, I decided that rehousing them wasn't necessary for me if I wanted to save some money. So I began looking for older, unrehoused versions. And unrehoused versions sell for much cheaper. Now buying Cook Speed Pancros isn't as easy as it used to be. These lenses are heavily sought after because their value and quality is now well known. And not only that, it's almost impossible to tell the quality of the lens because of their age. Fungus and hazing is very common among these lenses and they significantly reduce the value of these lenses. To top it off, there are so many different versions of the Cook Speed Pancro lenses that choosing the right lens can be a bit tricky. The best thing to do is to look at the serial numbers and only buy lenses which start with the number six or seven since these are newer and more modern versions of the S2 and S3 series. Although earlier serial numbers can produce nice results, the newer versions are generally a more consistent quality and a safer purchase. The best place to look for these lenses is on eBay, but they do sell quickly when they are put up for the right price. So how much can you expect to pay for a Cook Speed Pancro lens in its original form? Well, it seems to me like the going price for a good quality lens in its original housing is around 3,000 US dollars. While this is still a significant amount of money, Keep in mind that this lens is optically identical to the newer, far more expensive rehouse versions and a third of the price you would expect to pay for these newer versions. One of the main issues with buying individual older Speed Panko lenses is that there is almost always some sort of color shift between the lenses because of their age being manufactured in the 1960s. In particular, I have found that the 75mm Cook S2 suffers from a significant amount of yellowing in its optics, which is expensive to properly remove, and therefore I have to manually set the white balance every time I'm shooting on this lens. 
I have found that this yellowing does not affect the overall image quality of the lens, however. One of the most interesting things about this lens is obviously its size. It is a tiny lens and everything about it is far smaller than what you'd expect from a high-end cinema lens. The side of the lens makes it incredibly difficult to change aperture and get focus. And this is the biggest reason why the Rehouse versions are so sought after. The other tricky thing is the lens mount. The Pancros come in their original Ari Standard or Mitchell mounts, and I had to purchase a somewhat pricey adapter for its use on a PL mount. This adapter could cost up to 800 US dollars, depending on which version you go with. And only a specific one designed by Les Boscher fits the best on these Pancros. Overall, these lenses work best with a camera setup which is smaller and designed for it. I've adapted it to my Blackmagic Pocket 4K and my Aria Mirror and I'm always impressed by the results. Personally, shooting on Cook Speed Panker lenses was always a dream of mine and I feel very lucky that I've been able to have them as part of my current kit. In the future, I may choose to rehouse them but for now, I'm happy enough shooting on them in their current form factor.